To hear them talk, you'd never know that the nightmare of nuclear annihilation has been lifted from our sleep. You'd never know that our standard of living remains the highest in the world. You'd, you'd never know that our air is cleaner than it was 20 years ago. You'd, you'd never know that we remain the one nation the rest of the world looks to for leadership. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. And we did it because we were locked in this struggle with the Soviet Union. They invaded Afghanistan, and we did not want to see them control Central Asia. And we went to work. And it was President Reagan, in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what, sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. And we, guess what? They retreated. They lost billions of dollars, and it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. So there's a, a very strong argument, which is it wasn't a bad investment to end the Soviet Union, but let's be careful what we sow because we will harvest. So we then left Pakistan. We said, okay, fine, you deal with the stingers that we've left all over your country. You deal with the mines that are along the border. And by the way, we don't want to have anything to do with you. In fact, we're sanctioning you. So we stopped dealing with the Pakistani military and with ISI, and we now are making up for a lot of lost time. Raising their standard of living, and what does that mean? Millions of more cars, thousands of more coal-powered plants, people who are going to abuse Mother Earth the way that those of us in the advanced economies have for 150 years.